Tanjiro is one of the strongest demon slayers to ever live, and a big reason for that is because of his sun breathing technique. But what would happen if he learned moon breathing instead? How would this affect the story? Would the demon slayers still become victorious, or would it lead to their defeat? Well, for this to actually happen, Tanjiro would have to be trained by the one and only Kokushibo. Now, in the original story, Kokushibo is introduced later on in the Infinity Castle arc, but in the story, Kokushibo would replace Giyu when he found and saved Tanjiro that's trying to defend himself against his sister Nezuko, all the way back in episode 1. With this massive tweak in the story, everything would change. He would find Tanjiro's resemblance to Yorichi quite close, so he decided to save Tanjiro and put him under his wing, and teach him how to use the moon breathing technique. But why was Kokushibo there? Well, he just heard that the sun breathing technique was passed on to a certain family in the mountains and coincidentally happened to be there. Since Kokushibo is the upper moon one, he has a very high position on Muzan's side, basically being the right-hand man to Muzan himself. So, if he goes through with his plan to teach Tanjiro, it would be the same as betraying Muzan and joining the other side. Let's assume that Kokushibo being as strong as he is managed to be free from Muzan's grasp. Going back to the story, after saving both Tanjiro and Nezuko, all the way back in episode 1, Kokushibo decides to go through with his plan and train Tanjiro on everything he knows about swordsmanship to bring Tanjiro to his fullest potential. And since Giyu wouldn't be around to mentor Tanjiro, Tanjiro wouldn't be able to learn the water breathing technique. Technique. So the whole training arc with Urokodaki would have never happened. Kokushibo would be training Tanjiro completely with Tanjiro having zero combat experience. This would greatly affect Tanjiro's style because in the original story, Tanjiro is used to a more fluid motion because of the water breathing technique. But now since he is being trained by Kokushibo, his style is now more like the upper moons, which is better in my opinion. After being trained by Kokushibo in the basics of being a demon slayer, and after being introduced to the moon breathing technique, Tanjiro now enters enters the final selection as an unknown candidate and passes it with ease. This is because he is now more skilled and powerful than himself in the original story. After this, the story would progress as it did in the original story, but Tanjiro would show significant signs of being stronger than ever before. He would make quick work of Rui in the Mount Natagumo arc as well since he's already in possession of the moon breathing technique, which is significantly stronger than the water breathing technique that Tanjiro was using when he faced off Rui in the original story. So he's basically hitting Rui with techniques that literally slice the Hashira in half. It is important to note that this is the part where Tanjiro discovered the sun breathing technique in the original story. Well, not in this timeline though because he already knows the moon breathing technique and having it in his arsenal makes Tanjiro strong enough that it doesn't make him struggle against Rui, causing him to not discover the sun breathing technique. Yep, he's just that strong. In the Mugen train arc, it would go down the same way it did in the original story, but with some little changes. So what are those changes? Well, Tanjiro and the others would still be accompanied by Rengoku, and no matter how much you change the story, they would still fall into Enmu's trap. And in the end, they'd defeat Enmu with no problem at all. But things would change when Akaza arrives on the scene. This time, Tanjiro would be strong enough to assist Rengoku in the battle. Akaza would now be facing both Rengoku and Tanjiro with his moon-breathing style. Akaza is shocked by the breathing technique and quickly realizes it is the same form used by the Upper Moon One. As the battle starts, Akaza wants to kill Tanjiro first by going after him, but Rengoku stops him, locking both him and Akaza on a 1v1. The fight would turn out the same as in the main series, having Akaza kill Rengoku and escape just in time before sunrise. Tanjiro did try to help, but he stopped himself because he still recognized that he was not strong enough to defeat Akaza. After Akaza retreats, he reports to Muzan about Tanjiro using the moon breathing technique. Muzan suspects that Kokushibo might be betraying him because he is the only one who knows the moon breathing technique. However, he won't confront him right away. Muzan would wait for the right moment to confirm his suspicions and deal with Kokushibo. In the Entertainment District arc, Tenjin would still bring Tanjiro and the others with him to save his wives, and the story would progress as it did in the original story. However, Kokushibo would appear at the final fight as per the order of Muzan, and help Yotaro and Daki deal with the Demon Slayers. This was a mission to test Kokushibo's loyalty. Kokushibo starts with Tenjin, completely overpowering him. No matter how hard Tenjin tries, it's like David versus Galactus. Kokushibo kills Tenjin, and he sees that the other Demon Slayers that are with him are 
Tanjiro and his friends. He couldn't bring himself to kill them, so he quickly left the entertainment district without being spotted by them. Now, you would think that Tanjiro and his friends are at a disadvantage because they lost Tenjin, but Tanjiro knows how to properly use the moon breathing technique, unlike in the original series where Tanjiro knew sun breathing but couldn't use its full potential. Tanjiro would be on an equal level with Gyotaro while Zenitsu and Inosuke dealt with Daki. In the end, they are able to cut both the siblings' heads off simultaneously, which also caused Tanjiro's blade to snap. Unfortunately, in this timeline, the trio went home without Tenjin. Kokushibo reports to Muzan that he killed the sound Hashira and the children accompanying him but Gyotaro and Daki died in the process. In the Swordsmith Village arc, there are no massive changes. Tanjiro goes to the Swordsmith Village to get a new sword from Haganezuka and meets the Love Hashira and Mist Hashira. Then they get ambushed by Gyoko and Hantengu. The rest of the story happens the same as the main timeline. Gyoko and Hantengu are defeated and we find out that Nezuko is immune to the sun. Muzan confirms his suspicion of Kokushibo betraying him when he finds out that the Tanjiro who helped defeat Hantengu in the Swordsmith Village was the same demon slayer that was supposedly killed by Kokushibo in the Entertainment District. Muzan just can't simply believe that Kokushibo can kill a Hashira but can't kill an extra demon slayer. Muzan calls for a meeting with all the upper moons in the Infinity Castle and confronts Kokushibo there. No matter how strong Kokushibo is and even though he's the upper moon one, he simply cannot defeat the demon king. Kokushibo does not dare to deny it, so Muzan quickly strikes him. He tries to fight back and deal as much damage as possible, but it is all in vain. In the next second, Muzan's hand sliced Kokushibo's neck, ending his life. The battle at the Infinity Castle arc would happen the same at the beginning stages, but would change when it's time to fight Kokushibo. Since he won't be around anymore, Sanemi, Gyome, and the others would have sustained minimal damage because they wouldn't have to fight Kokushibo. That means that they would be in better shape when facing off against Muzan in the final battle. However, since Tanjiro isn't a user of the sun breathing technique anymore, more, he would have a harder time than he did in the original story when he faced off against the Demon King. The sun breathing technique was the trump card Tanjiro had against any demon that he faced off. And in this story where Tanjiro learned moon breathing instead of sun breathing, his chances of winning against Muzan just got slimmer. Sort of like when you thought that you were gonna ace the exam, but everything you learned didn't show up. During the final battle, Tanjiro and the others almost fell short of defeating Muzan, even with all of them unlocking their Demon Slayer mark and red Nishirin swords. Without Tanjiro's attacks with the sun breathing technique, the only option that they had in order to defeat Muzan would be to stall him until sunrise. They would actually succeed in killing him with sunlight, but it resulted in the deaths of more characters like Kanao and Zenitsu. However, in the end, Muzan would still successfully pass on his throne to Tanjiro as the Demon King. But this time around, without any form of weakness, not even the sunlight. Because Kanao died in the battle, she wouldn't be there to turn him back into a human being. This results in Tanjiro becoming the new Demon King. And oh boy, that's a story for another time. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell for more videos like this one. But before we go, check out the video on the screen for more Demon Slayer content.